Hey there, winos. This is Vince.Wine, and today I'm hanging out with Leo of Leo Steen Wines. He's going to give us an exclusive look at his tasting room, his vineyard, and his winery. So I'm really excited to check out what is it Leo Steen Wines have to offer on today's Wine Hopping. Hi, I'm Leo, Leo Hansen. I am born and raised in Denmark. We're standing here in uh, Alexander Valley, where I lived the last 20 years. I grew up in the, in the restaurant trade and the hotel business in Denmark with my parents, running a small uh, boutique hotel. So food and, and wine and the service industry was in my blood for sure. Later on, after my apprenticeship and my sommelier exam in the mid 90s, I wanted to kind of get my hands dirty and I found an internship right over here at Claude of Wine in the middle, middle of uh, Alexander Valley. I did have one in Burgundy lined up as well, but I figured California was definitely more exotic. So I, I jumped out on a plane and I landed in Hillsburg and uh, been fascinating to see how just the town and the area and the wine movement uh, have evolved over the last 20 years. We're standing here where I make my own wine since 2004, right here in beautiful uh, Alexander Valley. Awesome. So why don't you tell me a little bit about where we're at here? So we are in the Lytton district of Dry Creek Valley. So this is wedged in between uh, the Lytton Springs and Hillsburg. This is a vineyard that was planted in the 90s. They grafted this to uh, Grenache, grafted it, farm organically. And I personally think this site here, the soil the site is more suited for Grenache. Okay, Leo, I'm gonna geek out here. Can, what can you tell me about the, uh, the terroir, the soil The here? terroir, the soil here. So as you can see, it's just a gentle slope, nice exposure from morning and afternoon. On. The, the soil type, uh, if you want to geek out, is called Positas, Positas red clay. It has a, enough clay to hold some water capacity in this climate, this sort of Mediterranean drier climate. Uh, but it's still very loose and light. It's really healthy soil, lots of quartz. There's some sandstone uh, if you get in here with a shovel. It's well drained and then again enough of, of that clay to kind of bind and hold some water capacity uh, for these summers we have. If we do the fresh digging here, and the label I use for this particular wine kind of have a similarity of that sort of dirt and that red tones to it to sort of tie it into the wine. Awesome, very cool. <laughs> so the Dry Creek is kind of known for, for Sinfonil, and, and in certain ways you can kind of say Grenache likes Similar, there's some similarities to Sinfidel in the way that they're generally fairly big clusters, juicy berries that like to get sweet and ripe. So for me, it's to capture enough maturity in the grapes and pick them so they have that freshness and acid and the alcohol is in balance. That's the style that I'm aiming for on my brand. The wine uh, that you will taste uh, is in cask at the winery. That wine uh, is fermented whole cluster. So we just sort the grapes, whole cluster, we foot tread, and we kind of treat them like a Pinot Noir, very delicate, no signs of new oak, or anything. It is sort of the purity, no sulfur added. It's all spontaneous fermented. At this point, uh, my guess is we, we're going to be harvesting this by late September is probably a realistic target date as the summer looks at this point. How good are these going to be right now? They're not. They're going to be very hard. I don't, I don't <laughs> you, you, you two try it out. Oh, yeah. Right sour. <laughs> So these obviously haven't reached Eurasian yet. Um, Far from, no. Yeah, but no. Um, yeah, they're, still, they're, they're very fruity, very juicy. Great looking vineyard. I'm excited to go taste some wine. Let's head over to the winery. This is so cool. Why don't you guys come on in? Um, we're in this sort of like industrial little um, warehouse of a winery here. Really cool and it feels nice and cool in here. So I can tell that um, the barrels are, are, are really happy today. Um, I've got some interesting stuff here. I don't know what that is. So I'm looking forward to uh, Leo explaining some of that to us. And hopefully we can get a taste of a couple of things too and see exactly what it is that's going on in here. So Leo, why don't you tell us a little bit about what's happening in here? 
So this is a my cellar storage for primarily bales. We use cask. I really enjoy working with the concrete. Uh, I've been working with a few different kinds. This is this is a locally made in Petaluma. Uh, it's called a cast stone, so put in two pieces. The other small ones are the original called Nomblot. They're from Burgundy. What I like about these, and I use them for primarily Chenin Blanc and some Cabernet Franc from Santa Cruz. So I source grapes from pretty much down from Santa Barbara County, Santa Ynez Valley, up to to north of here up in Mendocino County. Concrete is a fantastic because they obviously you don't get the, the sensation of the, the flavors of oak or oak tannins. Small evolution of the wine. If they're used for fermentation, they almost have a natural appearance. The CO2 in the fermentation will kind of push and keep the leaves moving around and sort of protect the wine and create a more textured wine. These casks are Handmade in, in a Burgundy. I use them for Chardonnay, the Chardonnay from Santa Cruz Mountains, the uh, Grenache, which is in the uh, Lutens district of the Dry Creek Valley. This is uh, last year's vintage, 2019. So, a little bit of the same idea that the ratio of oak to the wine is limited. These are about 360 gallons, more or less six barrels of wine. I'm not looking to get any sort of oak profile, but this will develop the wine more so obviously than the, the concrete vessel. So the focus of my brand has always been Chenin Blanc and I work with three different vineyards, very different soils. One thing they have in common is they're all old wines. They're all planted uh, later 70s into early 80s. So the wines are more, more in balance that way. The Grenache I talked about, a few cents Santa Cruz wine, Chardonnay, Cabernet Franc. All right, here I am with um, the Grenache that Leo just poured, and um, it's really, really uh, a gorgeous looking wine. A little cloudy, I can tell that it's still got some youth on it, and these barrels are just super cool. Oh, wow, that is really a little bit lively still. I can tell it's mellowing out, but I'm left with just this really long finish of fruit. There is a decent amount of tannin structure on there as well, so um, this is still imparting enough tannin on there that it's making a really sort of chewy, bigger, full, more full body wine than I would have thought by that sort of light kind of color there that would have told me that it might be a little bit of a lighter body wine and yet um, it's got a really great full mouthfeel. Grenache Noir or Grenache is just one of those varietals that gives you nothing but strawberries and black pepper as the day is long and this is no exception but it's just got a little bit of a weightier feel to it which makes it a really attractive wine. So one of the driving factors, I would say, is also the curiosity, trying something unique out. This year is a little uh, project I did in 2011. The bungs have never been opened. That means these bells have never been topped. This is fortified Chenin Blanc. Next year in 2021, I am going to test them for the first time. Like I always joked, I said, this is this is for my, my kids' retirement. Let this wine slowly oxidize, get brown and, and super unique, all naturally so. This was juice, fermented lightly, and then fortified with high proof barrel-aged alcohol back in 2011. What does that mean? So we'll see. I'll bring uh, I'll bring it back when we pop them and uh, we, can, we can film it and see uh, and taste together and see how it goes. So uh, it might be another 10 years. Uh, maybe I'll bottle 50 cases and, uh, and leave the rest for a later date. So yeah. we'll see. So we are at the uh, the tasting room, and this is a very this is this is old Hillsburg. This is sort of the original. We are next to the train station, which is obviously was a, a big uh, centerpiece of old California town. We like wood. There's a lot of wood. There's a lot of history here. And this is called Old Roma Station, the south corner of Hillsburg. And these old buildings, they actually made wine here in the 1800s. Pretty much up to when Prohibition hit, those vineyards were pulled out and other crops were planted. This facility was used to dry prunes. And if we look a little closely over on the brick wall, uh, they look like the doors that are filled in, those were ovens. And they were going 24 seven and drying the prunes. So if you walk around this entire building, these ovens were all over for that purpose during Prohibition. And Big old beams in the back that really are 150 years old. It's a space, it's, it's open, it's light. We can really spread people out. And uh, the friend of the winery, he's working with recycled bales and lots of wood. Put the bar together. He's helped us build a lot of stuff uh, and was lucky to find this old wood over here. It's about 100 years old. This, this was a, uh, the head of a wine tank.
So typically we are open just in the weekends, but we are primarily focusing on people making an appointment and taking the time to give them an experience and, and tasting through the wines. We always pour Chenin Blanc and uh, sometimes we do a flight, we do all three of them and sometimes just one and then we'll throw in probably the Grenache. All right, I'm here at Leo Steen's tasting room and I've got his classic Chenin Blanc here. This is um, definitely his passion wine that got him started. Uh, tasting room's open and buzzing behind me, so um, I'm ready to join the tasters here. I love these like melon and honeysuckles coming off of here. Really fruity and really pretty white florals on here as well. Oh, wow. That has just like a perfect kiss of oak on there to give me just a touch of creaminess on the finish. I love that. Delicious. Okay, and here is the Grenache that we just uh, visited the vineyards for in Dry Creek Valley, the Provisor Vineyards. And um, I also got to taste this right out of that really cool big barrel. And it was a little cloudy at that time. It wasn't quite ready to go. So I'm really looking forward to seeing, um, you know, how this does. This is a 2017 vintage and this is the fully finished wine. So I'm really excited to see um, how this turns out. Wow, look at that color. It is a lot more clear than what came out of that barrel. Kind of makes me feel like it might have a little bit of a lighter body but man I remember that there was some tannin that was kind of surprising out of the barrel so let's see if that tannin held up on the palate oh man that enters so rich and full on the palate so yeah that tannin structure certainly held up there it's not like this punch you in the mouth red it is really gorgeous fresh red fruit i really like this wine um overall i think these are um, really cool i would love to invite you just to come out and uh, see what you think of these so when i came as an intern for a three months internship that has now turned into 21 years and my kids go to school down the street here. I feel more and more as a Hillsburg resident. But a big part of me and the, the part of the wine was sort of like people ask me why, you know, why you're not going back to Europe or making wine. It's like this big movement of the new California wine, which kind of came after the, the push of these extreme big overly oaked and alcoholic wines that was sort of pushing from the later 90s, specifically 97 vintage, up to the early 2000s. has been really fascinating to see how this big group have come together and really seeking out and trying to make wines like they used to be here in California back in the 70s and 80s, where they were really balanced, restrained, moderate alcohol, moderate use of oak, all of those factors. So we are making wines that has freshness and energy and they are, you know, has a capability of aging, which is, a key uh, to the style of wine I do. And really also this explosion of uh, trying to make other than the typical top six varieties, all of these unique other pockets of which you just had the Grenache, uh, the Chenin Blancs I'm working with. And so for me, that's, that's, a, that's a huge part of Northern California and uh, California in general. And really, I think it's been putting those wines on the map not just here, but Europe is a big import of a lot of these different brands that makes the wines in the style that John Bonnet, Eric Asmov, to mention a few wine critics have really been supportive and really been taking under their wings. Oh man, this has been a fantastic day. I've got my uh, pork tacos here, uh, the food truck's right behind me, making a mess of myself, of course. Um, but Leo Steen Wines, um, here at his shared tasting room, has uh, a bunch of events and stuff that they do. They try to get a lot going on, but I I'm really excited to have this with a little bit of my Riesling to wash that down with. Oh, I'm spoiled. Thank you so much, Leo, for showing us around today. I'm in love with your Grenache. Um, this has been really, really cool. And hey, if you guys enjoyed what you saw here today, be sure to leave me a like. That helps a lot. Don't forget to share this with your wine friends. And until next time, winos, drink safe and drink well. Hey, bud, what's it like having a dad for a winemaker? It's okay. <laughs>